Welcome to this substance training video. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at updated workflows in Substance Designer 6. First, we're going to start by taking a look at some preferences. Here at the top of the menu, I'm going to just visit here my Edit, Preferences, and we can take a look here underneath the Projects category. Now you'll notice that we've taken all of the uh, preferences that are under projects and we've grouped them here into these tabs uh, just for better organization. And I wanna bring your attention here to this general tab and I'll just scroll down and you'll notice that we now have this new option here for the default normal map format. This option here is gonna let you pick which format you wanna work with. So for example, Substance Designer has always worked in DirectX as its default format, but if you're going to be working in OpenGL, you can now set this as a global preference here for your project. So in my case here, I'm gonna set this default normal map format to OpenGL. Now, right underneath of this, you'll notice that we have this alpha channel option as well, and there are two options. We have uh, fill alpha with input, and we have force alpha to one. Now, force alpha to one is basically just going to remove that alpha channel. So let's just keep the settings like this and I'll just hit apply and click okay. Now, I'm gonna create a new substance. So here I'll come up to file and choose new substance. And I'm just gonna just create an empty graph for this. And so now that I have my graph here, I'm just gonna hit the space bar on my keyboard and I'm just going to navigate to this normal node and I'm just gonna left click to create this node. So with the normal node selected underneath the parameters, you can see that I now have my normal format is automatically set to OpenGL for me. Also, this node has this new alpha channel content option and you can see that it is also set to force alpha to one, which matches the preference that I set for my project. So now, if I just create a shape here that I'm gonna use for my normal, so here I'll just uh, do a quick search here for this mesh one. And so we'll just take this guy, let's just tile it just a bit, and we'll plug this here into the input. So if I double click, and here, let's take our intensity. Uh, let me just drag this value all the way up here to three. And so here in my 2D view, you can see here that I have the alpha enabled for the image, but we don't actually see any of this alpha information. So in previous versions of Designer, you would actually see that here. So again, because we have the force alpha to one, we no longer have to worry about dealing with that alpha channel. So now let's take a look at our 3D view. Uh, just to demonstrate how the shader is going to work with this new normal format option, I'm just going to take this normal, right click, and just drag and drop it over here into the 3D view. When I let go of my right mouse button, I get a little pop-up that's gonna allow me to just apply this to a channel, so I'm just gonna choose normal. And now we can see this is applied here to my normal channel, and it's rendering correctly here on my 3D mesh. If I come over here to my materials, and I go to my edit, this is the default material for this cube mesh, and I choose edit, you'll notice here that the DirectX normal for this material is set to false. Again, this is set because of that global preference that I chose in my project. Now, at the recording of this video, it's important to say that this format is only going to adhere to that preference with this normal node, the node found on the spacebar menu. So for example, if I do a search, so I'll just start to search in here normal, and we have the normal Sobel node, you can see that its normal format is set to DirectX, so it did not adhere to that setting for me. Now, this is something we'll address in a future update, but for now, I just wanted you to be aware that the only normal node that's going to adhere to this preference is going to be the normal node found on the spacebar menu. Okay, so next up, I wanna talk about some image formats. So again, let's go to our preferences, and we'll go back to our projects category. And here under general, we'll just scroll down and you'll notice that we now have an image formats category. And here we have the main image formats and now we have options. So for example, if you wanted to work with TIFF here, we have compression options that you can change. The options that you set here for these image formats are going to be used whenever you're exporting the textures or the textures that are being created by the bakers. So now you have more control over these compression types and settings for these individual image formats. So the last preference I wanna cover is going to be underneath our 3D view. And so you'll notice that we have this new option here, environment hidden by default. So here you can see that in my 3D view, we don't see the environment. And that's because this environment hidden by default is enabled. And I do wanna point out that this option here is enabled by default when you install Substance Designer 6. 
So if you prefer to see your environment, you can just come over here and uncheck this. Now at any time, let me just cancel that, we can come over here to our environment and choose Edit, and we can enable and disable it here as well. We have some new baking options. So I already have a mesh imported. I'm just going to right click and choose bake model information. And so here in the scene information baking window, you'll notice that I have my mesh and this mesh is comprised of several sub meshes. So here at the top of the scene, you'll notice that we have this new select by option. And at default here, it's set to sub mesh, but I can now change this here to material. So now this lets me sort by material. On this particular mesh, I have these four materials. So for example, if I wanted to just bake based on material, I could enable the materials that I want to bake, or I could just disable all these guys and just choose one. So for example, if I just wanted to bake the handle, I could enable this. I'll come over here to my baker and let's just add something like say a position. And so now I'm going to bake the position map for just the mesh parts associated with this material. So with that, we also have a new macro for the resource name. So if I come over here to this drop down arrow and I'll click this, you'll notice that we now have the ability to choose this material. So in this case, I'm just going to remove the mesh and I'm going to replace this here with this material macro and just place it here at the end. So let me just redo that here. So now I have this material macro and so you can see that it's going to create this name of handle, which is my material name, underscore position, which is my baker name. So just to demonstrate this, I'm just going to choose this method here to embed. So it'll just embed it here into my substance package. And I'm going to quickly just bake this. So here is my handle position. And here's the bake. Now, if I go back here to my baker, so again, we'll just go into our bake model information. And we have handle, let's say that I want to bake uh, a different material. So this time we'll just uh, choose base. You can see that it's automatically updating here based on my material macro and we'll click OK. And so now I get another baked map here for me. So this is uh, much more convenient and just another way to filter which parts of the mesh we're going to bake. So another feature to the baker that was added is the ability to bake non-square. So again, let's go back here to, uh, well here, let's do a different one. Let, this time, let's just do the core material. And you'll notice that here underneath my output size, I can actually uncheck this link option so I could choose to do a different bake, let's say 1024 by 512. Also new in Designer 6, we have the ability to bake up to 8K resolution. But for this case, I'm just gonna leave it at 512. Here, I'll click OK and we'll bake this guy out and just double click again. And here you can see that I was able to bake this here 1024 by 512. When publishing a substance, you now have the ability to set a compression. So here I have a substance. I'm going to right click this package and I'm going to choose export the SPSAR file. And so I'm just going to just place this into my default directory. And now on the Substance Archive Publish options, you'll notice that we now have this new compression mode. And so it's set to auto by default, and we have an option for best and none. So the auto is, is going to allow Substance Designer to handle the compression type based on the resources that you have inside of your substance. So it's going to try to you know basically just figure out the best case scenario for you. We also have this option here for best, so it's going to compress uh, a bit more, but it's just going to be, but it's going to take a little bit longer to save the file. And then here we have none, which is going to be no compression, and it's going to save the substance a lot more quickly. Now, this could be good if you're kind of prototyping a substance that you want to use inside of Painter, and you know, you're not really worried about compression at this time. You just want to be able to you know, make your changes, publish out the substance, and then jump back over to Painter. You could use this none option to kind of do that. Okay, so uh, once I have this set, I'll click OK, and this is going to publish my substance. So now, if I come back over here to my substance package, again, I'll just right-click. You'll see that now there is an option here for export SBSAR file as previous with this keyboard shortcut. So now, every time I use Control-Shift-P, it's going to publish my substance with the compression settings that I chose the previous time.
there's a really nice new feature to the 2D view. So if I zoom in here in the 2D view and I use my middle mouse to pan, I can now pan beyond the extents of the image. This has been a long requested feature, so if you're like me, you probably have a pretty big grin on your face about now. In the graph, we now have this new parent size control, and this is going to make working with resolution so much easier. So when you are creating your substance uh, here at the root level of the graph, you have your output size. You can now leave this output size set to be relative to parent. So in the case of designer, that means that the resolution here is going to be set to this 256 by 256. This is what I would want to have when I actually publish my substance, but it's not really ideal for when I'm working in my substance and I want to see the best resolution uh, that I can work with. So instead of having to switch this to absolute or working with a multiplier of the parent, I can simply come up here to the graph and change this parent size. So for example, if I just set this here to 1024, I can just simply recompute my entire graph without ever having to change the root graph's resolution. So here you can see I'm now working with this 1024 by 1024 resolution. Now, this parent size is only going to control the graph that I'm in right here. So if I instance this graph, this output size is what's actually going to be used. Same as if I go to publish my substance. So this is really just for being able to preview resolution quickly within your graph. So to demonstrate this, I am going to create a new substance. And so here, uh, I'll just use one of the default templates. Uh, for the size mode, I'm going to set it to be relative to parent. And we'll just click OK. So here's our new substance. Let's take this bricks and let's instance it here. You'll notice that as I zoom in and look, the resolution of this graph is now taking on the resolution of its host, which is the graph that we just created that's set to be relative to parent. We've made some changes to working with keys in the gradient editor. So here, I'm just going to hit my space bar and create a gradient map. And I'll come over here to the gradient editor, and I'll just left click to plot a few keys here. So now I can left click and drag to select multiple keys. With multiple keys selected, I can left click and drag to edit multiple key positions at the same time. I can also change the color for all of the selected keys. So here in this case, I'm just going to set this value to red. In this beta version that I'm using, there is a bug here in the RGB display, but that will be fixed on release. We have also changed the precision slider, and we've removed the noise slider. So for example, if I come over and grab the pick gradient tool, and I'm just going to sample uh, a few color ranges here. And this is going to plot some keys. We've now simplified the way this precision slider works. So now I have these keys. If I want to remove some of these keys, I can just simply drop the precision value here. I have my graph selected, and underneath attributes, we have this new physical size property. Now, this setting is going to allow me to match this generated texture size to a real world dimension. And this value is expressed in centimeters. So for example, let's say here for my x, I'm going to set a value of 12 centimeters. And for my y, I'm going to set a value of 24 centimeters. This essentially becomes my sample size that I want to be able to map to an actual mesh object. So if I want to visualize this here, I can click the button that we have here at the bottom of the 2D, and this is going to use the physical size to display the image. So I'll click this button, and now I can see the physical size represented here in the 2D view. So just to visualize this now on a 3D object, I'm going to take this checker, I'm just going to apply it here to the base color input of my shader. So I'm just going to right click and drag and drop this here into the view and set this texture to base color. And so now when we look at this, we can see that we're actually getting some distortion here on our 3D model. So we can actually fix this by coming over here to materials and choose edit. And here we have this option called UV scale enabled. This option here is going to compensate for the distortion you get when trying to fit a non-square ratio such as we have here in a square power of two image. So if I just enable this, you can see now our specific physical size image here is now mapping correctly to the geometry. So just to give you a more clear idea of what's happening, I'm just going to demonstrate this here in a 3D program. So here you can see I have this checker pattern. Uh, in this case, this is a uh, square power of two image, and it's mapping here to this sphere mesh. And you can see that we're getting this distortion. 
So in order to compensate for this, in this particular case, I'm going to select the UVs and I can just scale them so that the UV scale matches the shape of the mesh. And this removes the distortion. So now with this new mode, we can visualize that inside of Substance Designer.